This is a breaking generational cursing service. And I want to start by saying that curses are unseen forces that have the ability to bring evil to come to pass. The unseen forces, you can't see curses just like you can't see blessings. You can't see curses with your eyes, but you can't deny the effects. They have the power to bring evil to come to pass, to bring calamity to come to pass, to bring sorrow, misfortunes to come to pass. Whatever been assigned to bring sorrow to you and your family, that is silence today. Amen. Cases are terrible in nature. They don't respect your educational qualification. <laughs> That's why you can see a professor that is begging. Professor of agriculture, but he doesn't have any, not even a, one small farm. <laughs> and he's begging. You can see somebody that is working in maybe NMPC or Central Bank still borrowing. They don't respect your sex, nor your height, nor your connections. There are people that are connected, but the more they connected they are, the more confused they are. It doesn't respect your country of origin. You can live here and jump out to Germany and be jamming jams. Causes have their actually empowerment to fail. They dispower people from society. They empower people to fail. It's empowerment to toy, to struggle. Working without results to show. Number three, causes are forces of limitations. They bring punishment and harm to people. Every form of curse that's hanging around the destiny of anyone here will be put on a reverse today. Yeah. It's true, curses are real, but more really are blessings. And the blessings of God will come upon you today. Now, limited to generational causes, see, generational causes are transferable in nature. They are inherited. They flow through the genes or the bloodline. That's why even medical science recognizes this. So. <laughs> even our people in the, the olden days, when our people want to marry, they don't have they don't have lab, but they have a way of doing tests. Checking somebody has SS or not. Or is, they say, go and check that place. Is anybody sick in their family? Is anybody mad? Do you understand? <laughs> you think they don't know what they're doing. They may not have access to medical lab, but they know how to check those things out. You go to med, med, ask any doctor what I'm talking about. You go to hospital. One of the things the doctor will want to know is your medical history. And they want to ask you, did your father, did your father suffer diabetes or high blood pressure? Now that you're suffering high blood pressure. Did your grandfather suffer it? Because they know it can flow through the bloodline. You know is that the same God that brought you here today will put on a reverse every generational cause. Yeah. So that's why you see some sicknesses are flowing through the bloodline. Some may be untimely death. Nobody lives above a certain age. In Shiloh last year, we had a testimony. A woman shared a testimony that in her, father, in her husband's house, people don't live above 40 years. But she and her husband took it upon themselves and began to pray. And I think that day, as she was sharing the word of the husband, was already 60 years. So such things can be reversed. Some places it may be disappointment, marital spell, barrenness of any kind. Some people are vagabonds. 
gamblers. Nobody becomes a graduate. Nobody marries correctly and all those things. But I pray today that every conscious or unconscious girl shall be shattered in Jesus' name. Amen. Quickly, let's look at the reality of generational causes. The reality. Because we'll be talking like this. Somebody say, Pastor, is it true? Let's go to scriptures and see. Because the scripture should be our final authority. True of us. Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Please come with me. Matthew 21. 1 to 3. You're going to read with me. One to go. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and we are come to Bethlehem, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and search where you shall find an ass tied, and caught with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord had need of them, and straightway ye will send them. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. <laughs> now look at it. Jesus sent them to that village. And he said, if you go there, you're going to see an ass tied. Physically, it was the ass that was tied. But there's a cord, the child with her, and it was also tied. But you can't see the chain. You will see an ass tied with the, the cord with her. When Jesus wanted to lose them, Jesus said, lose them. He didn't say, lose her. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Lose them. Lose what? Them. Which means, two of them we are tied, but we are not told the court was physically tied. I hope you are getting what I'm talking about. Why was the court tied? Why was the court tied? Because of affinity with the mother. There are certain people today that are tied because of where they come from. And you didn't have the right to make the choice. God made the choice for you. I wrote in my book, Making Yourself Marketable. There are choices you make for yourself. There are choices God made for you. And there are divine choices. You never chose where you should come from. Amen. God chose for you. You never chose who should be your siblings. God chose for you. Because that ass was with the, the court was with the ass, it was also tied. But thank God for Jesus. And the same Jesus is here. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So whatever has tied you in your father's house, in your mother's house, whatever has tied you because of where you come from, today, be loose. Did you hear what Jesus said? He said, lose them. And let them go. He said, if anyone will stand and challenge you and say, why are you losing them? Tell the person, the master has need of them. Say with me, the master has need of me. So I must be loose. The master has need of me. I must be loose. Are you sure the master has need of you? Be loose in the name of Jesus. From every form of inherited disease, diabetes, ulcer of any kind, every form of barrenness, every form of high blood pressure, be loose in the name of Jesus. From every chain of slavery, maybe nobody marries in your family, nobody gets a child, I command you, loose in the name of Jesus. Hear me? What embarrass your parents will not embarrass you. Whatever is happening in your community, it may not even be family. Maybe it's the same community. There's a community nobody has ever gone to school. Nobody has ever accomplished anything. Nobody has ever reached any height. Did you not say? He said, he showed me four horns. What are the horns going to do? He said, they are come to scatter the Judah. Israel and Jerusalem. That nobody will leave their head. There are certain places, certain things that are scattering people. Certain principalities have been assigned. Demons have been assigned to ensure that nobody leaves their head. But hear me and hear me well today. Whatever has not allowed you to lift your head, not allowed your family to lift your head, not allowed you to accomplish those things you're supposed to accomplish, I command such limitations to be scattered. He said, lose them. Generational causes are bondages passed from parents. That generational pollution, that generational defilement, they keep running until it stops. God will use you to stop that in your generation in the name of Jesus. 
Everything that has not allowed anyone to lift their head in your family. Today by fire, I command them to be quenched. <laughs> Somebody say, Pastor, is this really true? Second Kings chapter 5. Let's look at something. Verse 27. Many of you remember the story of Naaman. How Naaman came to prophet Elijah to recover him of his leprosy. And how he was recovered. But Gehazi, the peer of Elijah, ran after unrighteous gain and came back. The master asked him, where did you go? <laughs> you don't know. There are certain things. He said, that sit down and see. Young men climb up. They can't see it. Where did you go? He said, I didn't go anywhere. I was just there. I, didn't, I, didn't, I just there. And then the man said, well, did I not see you? And my eye, my heart followed you. I was seeing everything you did. Verse 27, please come with me so that you see what was the result of that action. Verse 27, one to go. The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. Now look at this. I don't know if Naaman was married that um, Gehazi was married or not. But it means anybody Gehazi will marry has already been implicated. Any child Gehazi will have is already implicated in this cause. The children, children. If Elijah stopped at, if Elijah stopped at the leprosy of Lemon came to you, you could have been okay. <laughs> but he said to your seed forever, which means anyone that will come from the generation of Gehazi will suffer because of one transaction. Med. Let's be careful. I used to tell people, if you don't like your life, <laughs> help your children. No? There are certain transactions people have done in your generation that have implicated you, sir. And that's why we need to rise to stop it. We need to rise to do what? To stop it. To stop it. And today is that day. Somebody say, yes, I don't understand. Luke chapter 7, 11 to 15. Now, there was a woman called the widow of Nan. <laughs> and this widow, being a widow means that the husband was dead, three of us. And then she had only son. And the devil didn't see anybody to kill. Targeted only this son or this widow. In other words, to make her childless or sonless. I don't know if she had other daughters, but we are not told. I don't know if she had other sons before they died. I don't know. But the only son. You know what that means? There had been a siege of death of many children in that family. Are you getting what I'm talking about? What killed the father? Killed him. The battles your parents fought, you will not fight it. Yeah. Somebody understand that message. The battles your parents fought, you will not fight it. Yeah. You will not leave battle for your children to fight. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. The only son of a widow. But thank God for my Jesus. That, I'm, 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 I'm sharing this so that you can understand what Jesus can do. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus came and wiped out that, that weeping. There was so much weeping. The whole community gathered. Why? Should have killed another person. Which means no one child, male child in that family. I don't know when he started killing, you know, maybe he killed the grandfather too. But Jesus said no. Jesus touched that casket and the young man stood up and started speaking immediately. He started speaking. Verse 15. He started speaking immediately. I don't know whether he was quarreling with somebody before, before that night. He started speaking. Now hear me and hear me well. Whatever wants to silence you, God will silence them. Amen. Whatever wants to silence your family, God will silence them. Amen. Whatever wants to take your joy, I command such things to be taken away. Amen. I had a story of a lady that wedded in a church many years ago. She just wedded. They sang all the song. They stepped out to go and take a photograph. And you know what happened? She started tearing her gown. To the extent, she almost naked herself until the bundle her into the car, took her to the psychiatric hospital. It was later they discovered 
that nobody ever does white wedding in their generation. All you do is just <laughs> get pregnant for someone and go and be cohabiting with the person, burning children free of charge. No marriage. She tried to break it. The demon assigned to supervise that covenant that somebody may have entered came demanding judgment. Now hear me. Whatever has been demanding judgment in your life, in your family, against you, against any member of your family, I command them to be silenced today. Oh, somebody is not hearing me. I know what I'm talking about. Now hear me. My Bible told me in Proverbs 11 verse 11. But the blessing of your pride, a city shall be exalted. All you need whenever you see a cause is to introduce a blessing. The blessing will be put on in reverse. I have come today with the blessing of the righteous. And I decree whatever be silencing your family will be silenced. Yeah. Whatever be mocking the, your redemption will be destroyed. Yeah. Whatever be challenging God in your life will be silenced today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Please never lose sight of thee. The master had need of you. I had a testimony some time ago when I was doing my church. A young man came and shared a testimony. Every match, somebody must die in their family. And I, by the serial death, as a young man, he had become the eldest. So to him, he felt that maybe he never to die. I match in the church. And I did my church then. And then, by April, he stood, he was sharing his testimony. For the first time in many years, no death happened in your family in March. Now hear me and hear me well. Whatever untimely death I've been taking people, young, old, adult, I command you to cease. Amen. You will not bury your children. Amen. No one here will bury their children. Amen. Your children will not bury their grandchildren. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Balaam hired, Balak hired Balaam to curse the God's people and he couldn't curse them. And he said, how can I curse who God has blessed? Numbers 23 verse 8. I can't defy who God has not defied. I can't curse who God has not cursed. Now hear me, you are that one God has blessed. Amen. No traceable curse will remain in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 20, he said, I have a commandment to bless, and I cannot do otherwise. <laughs> Today, get ready to be blessed. Amen. Are you going here with blessing? From now, your smell shall be like the smell of a blessing of the Lord. Amen. Anywhere you step into the blessing will come. Amen. Anywhere you step from now, blessing will come. Amen. Anywhere you go from now, blessing will speak. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You know one thing with the blessing of God? Causes cause sorrow. The blessing of God does not cause sorrow. The blessing of God makes rich and added no sorrow with it. So be blessed. In the name of Jesus. Jabez cried one day. Jabez said, Oh God of heaven, God of Israel, Oh that thou would have blessed me indeed. He knows that causes put, are put on a reverse by blessing. Oh that thou would have blessed me indeed. Oh that might enlarge my cause. Or that thou hand might be upon me. And all that thou could copy me from evil that will not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Anything you request of God today in terms of blessing, I command it to, be, to answer to you. Amen. Every cause will put on a reverse. Amen. In Jesus' glorious name. <laughs> oh, serving God, therefore, is one of the major ways to enter the blessing of God that put causes on a reverse. I told you, if you want to reverse any cause, introduce blessing. Just like if you want to stop darkness, what do you do? Introduce light. Is there any negotiation when you bring in light? Do you know where darkness goes from? The same way, when you introduce blessings, sir, causes are put on a reverse. And serving God is one of the ways you enter into the blessing of God. And we know the blessing of God reverses causes. Job 36, 11. Job 36, 11. If they obey and serve me, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Exodus 23, 23 to 25. 
Serve the Lord your God. He will bless your water. He will bless your bread. He will take away sickness from the midst of day. He will not allow you to cast your young to be barren in the land. The number of your days he will fulfill. You will not die young. Amen. That's why we said that serving God is not a mere religious activity or hobby. Serving God is a big time business. Serve me big time business. Luke 2, 49, Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. Jesus saw serving God as a business. And the Bible told us not to be slothful in business, but in the spirit, serving the Lord. Romans 12, 11. That's why if you notice, we've been, in the course of this month, we'll be studying this subject, serving God and the interest of his kingdom, pays your matchable. So today we're looking at part 4A in this first service. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom pays your matchable. The question now is, what are the platforms for kingdom advancement stewardship? Remember, from the first Sunday, we told us the three kinds of service in the kingdom. Fiscal service, which involves the units, the serving in the unit and department. Spiritual service, soul winning, prayer, kingdom advancement prayers. Financial service, giving to advance the kingdom of God and all that. But we've been focusing on the spiritual still worship. So understand. And today we want to see two aspects of spiritual still worship that you need to be involved in. Because spiritual still worship pays more than any of the aspects of service. Do you understand? It pays the most. But what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So one soul, for instance, you gain is much more than the whole world combined together. So number one platform for kingdom advancement to worship we're looking at is praying for the flow of the word of eternal life that will establish new converts and members in the church. Praying for the flow of the word of eternal life that will establish new converts and members in the church. One way God reaches to us when we come to him is through his word. It is his settled word that settles the issues in our lives. And in John 6, 66 to 68, most of the disciples that came to Jesus went back because some of them came because of what to get. Never serve God because of what to get. They were eating bread. You know, Jesus was turning, you know, water to wine, they would drink. They would now do a miracle of feeding the 5,000, the 4,000. So some of them came for the bread. So when they didn't see it, some of them walked away. Jesus asked the disciples, that, that was the, the apostles now that were with him, won't you also go away? Ah, they said, no, <laughs> those people don't understand. Where shall we go? Because you have the words of eternal life. Say we read the words of eternal life. And that's how it is. Some of you are here today because of the word of eternal life. If you go anywhere, there's life applicable teaching from the word of God that meeting your need, you won't go anywhere. So we must pray for that to come. Not that that pastor, we don't know what happens. Eh? You don't get anointed. You to pray for God to put the right word in the mouth of pastor. Glory to God. I've tried this many times. It has worked for me. That sometimes I'm coming to, I say, God, I want to hear a word. No matter who is preaching, I want to hear something from you. And you just see somebody, maybe one scripture, or one thing. it may have happened to you before. Just one answer to some issues in your life. Just answer. Pray for the word of eternal life. That will establish first time as newcomers. Can you imagine somebody coming for the first time today? Coming for the, you know, coming. Hallelujah. I don't know. One of us maybe is here today. He was uh, invited him. He came last Sunday. He saw me. Uh, later he called me. He said, I like what I had. I'm coming next Sunday. So you, you, need, you need to pray for such words to come. You know, the pastor is not the one that gives the word. God is the giver of the word. God gave the word. But we are publishers. Great are they that publish it. Are you getting me now? So we need to pray to God to give the word. Can you imagine somebody comes here today and they say very question they've been asking for 10 years or 20 years, that word come to solve it. You won't tell the person. Even if you tell the person don't come, he will push you away and start coming. Are you getting what I'm talking about? It is our duty to do that. And before you come to any service, make sure you are praying that. Number two, be committed to investing financially in kingdom promotion endeavors. 
be committed to investing financially in kingdom promotion endeavors. Where the heart of a man is, there his treasure will be. Are you getting me now? If your heart is here and it's, it's what God is doing, your treasure will be there too. I told them last one is there here. Any money you will not serve God with, you end up serving it. One way to keep the love of money in your life is to serve God with your money. God is my witness. I know what to do with my money. I hardly eat money I get. I use it to serve God. But most things I need, they come to me like that. Glory to God. <laughs> Please, keep that love for money. Use it to serve God. Open your eyes always. Look for opportunities. What to do to promote the kingdom of God. Is somebody following me now? That's what made God to love David. That's what made God to love David. First Chronicles 29 verse 3. You know, David said, because of my affection for the house of my God, I provided for the house of the Lord, the things of gold and things of silver, things of grass. David provided more than any other person what to use to build the temple. The same temple God said you will not build, but he said I must be involved. He provided what to use to build the temple. Macedonian church was not the only church that Paul preached to. He met the, the, the Thessalonians, the other churches, Galatians, uh, Corinthians, all of them. But why was the man anywhere he's going, he was sharing the testimony of that Macedonian church? That even in their deep poverty, in their deep poverty, sir, they were still generous. Why? What will be said concerning your church? Or you? Paul was talking about that church. In Philippians 4, from 15 to 19, he said, uh-uh, when I, you, you, there's other ch- no other person communicated to me in giving and receiving than you. Because you get once and again. Not once and for all. Some people say once they did. That's all. Once and again. Say with me once and again. Uh-huh. And it's what giving and receiving. Some people are waiting for when they receive before they give. No. You give. You receive. You give. You receive. Ask Moses. That's how they began to. They, at the time they said they would not give offering in church again. Because the people were bringing. God was blessing them. Hallelujah. The time, there was no room to contain the blessing. They said, don't bring again. Will that happen in our time? <laughs> so Paul began to pray. He said, my God, verse 19, will supply to all your needs according to his riches in glory. That prayer was not for everybody. It's not for all the churches he went to. <laughs> it was for the Messianic church. You know, many of us claim that prayer. He like it very well. My God will supply all my needs in riches in glory. Go and do from 15 to 18 before you qualify. In Jesus' name. Amen. Say with me, I hear. Amen. If somebody is angry, I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Some people now, you don't touch them. This is why you don't touch them. You say, Pastor, preach your courses. <laughs> okay, please, let's progress. What do we do? For still worship to qualify for rewards. It's not enough to do it. You must do it acceptably. Hebrews 12, 28. They say, let's receive grace. I told me, serve God. Acceptably. So there is an acceptable way of doing it. If you don't do it according to the requirement, you won't get the blessing. And as people that have understanding, let's see. What are those Requirement that qualify as stewardship for the world. Number one, we must serve God as a privilege and not as a burden. Can somebody say that with me? We must serve God as a privilege, not as a burden. Jeremiah 23, 33 to 40. <laughs> the Bible warned us not to say the burden of the Lord. Don't ever say the burden of the Lord. God said, if you say the burden of the Lord, if you see service as a burden, he said, the burden of the Lord, I will cast you out of my presence. Because God does not work with serious people. So see it as a privilege. If you are here, you are born again child of God, and God has called you to serve him, sir, it's a privilege. Don't ever see it as a right. Don't see it as a qualification. 
I told us here before, serving God is not a gift. It's not a calling. It's a choice. And it's a choice of the wise. Joshua 24, verse 15. Joshua said, a wise man. <laughs> he said, I choose you this day who we will serve. For me, I will serve the Lord. Me and my family will serve the Lord. And God. So it's a choice of the wise. 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 1, 26 to 29. Please follow me. This will humble each and every one of us and will bring us to order. Because many a times, people who don't know God, that judge, direct, and make money. When you know God, you humble yourself. The more you know Him, sir, the more you humble yourself. Look at this. Read with me 1 Corinthians 1, 26 to 29. For you see your calling, brethren, how that many, not many wise men after the flesh, nor many mighty, nor many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confirm the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of this world to confirm the things which are mighty. And base things of this world and things which are despised has God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. This is the technology of God. God does not call the qualified. He calls the unqualified and qualifies them by his mercy and favor. So if you think you are called by God, please note that you are foolish. You are foolish. You are not wise. You are foolish before God called you. <laughs> so God don't get wise before him. If you are called, you are not mighty. You are not noble. If you are called, you are weak. That's what this scripture said. If you are called, that means you are the ones despised. So thank God for God that I brought you out and I'm taking you now. You know, that's why he told Saul, when you were little in your own eye, did I not make you a king? When Saul began to see himself as he has arrived. Oh, oh, I don't want to, I don't want, if I tell you my story on Saul, eh? What I discover about Saul, I fear for him. I don't think Saul is in heaven. If I go to heaven, I say Saul, I will ask question. Saul had his last dinner with the witch. His last dinner, he ate it in the witch house. Saul, that it could have been Jesus, the son of Saul. Just one step, he missed it. That's why you need to be more humble, sir. One step, sir. Now that your kingdom should have been established forever, one step to forever establishment, like God has established David and given him a street in heaven, he missed it. See, because you rejected the word of the Lord, I will reject you from being king. Saul became rejected, anointed. To so just then that David was crying, how has Saul died as if he was not anointed? Which means the anointed should not die anyhow. How did this man die like this? We will not miss it though. We will not miss it. That's why, sir, all of us, including me talking, must be careful as we walk in the call. The caller is not the, the caller is the door. The caller is not the door. First session of chapter 5, verse 24. God's servant Bishop Oedipo says something. And he said, This is what puts him on check. And we should learn from such stories. He said, God told him, for your information, I have better neighbors than you. In case you misbehave, I will remove you and put better neighbor. He gave you the example of Saul and David. David was the better neighbor now. He has always been there. He was in the bush warming up. What do you think those reserve team in the football match, what do you think is their prayer? So that you break leg, they will enter. If he's warming up like this, cha, 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 he said, go, break leg, break leg, break leg. <laughs> what? So you better keep your leg so that you can remain in the game. <laughs> Say with me right here. <laughs> this should humble us. I had a story from Padeboye, E.A. Deboye. And that story has always put me on check. He said, after Lekki, Holy Ghost Festival of 1998, that was one of the greatest events that ever happened in Nigeria, Christian event. Over 7 million people gathered. More than population of certain countries. 
God used one man to gather. He said he was bowing down, thanking God. And God told him, my son, sit down. It's okay. Draw something like human figure on the ground. He drew it. <laughs> he said, wipe it. He wiped it. He said, any day you forget that I'm the doer or what I'm doing, I will wipe you like that. Nobody will ever remember you. He said, people may think he's humble, that he knows why it's like that. <laughs> because God's glory is not something anybody should tamper with. It's a privilege for you to serve him. There are people who are mightier than you that we are not called. There are people who are stronger than you, worthier than you, better than you, sir. There today, they are even praying, if somebody can come, let me be saved. But God saved you to serve him. You are not saying the burden of the Lord. Say with me, I repent. Lord, show me mercy. Number two, serve God with goodwill. Goodwill. In accounting, goodwill is considered an intangible asset. You don't see it, but it's an asset. Hallelujah. That's why in balance sheet of many organizations, you see goodwill. Precious people of God, we must all serve God with goodwill. Goodwill towards God and towards men. Don't have any offense towards God and towards men. Paul said, here didn't do I exercise myself to have offense, free of, to have a conscience, void of offense towards God and towards man. Acts 24 verse 16. Ephesians 6, 7 to 8. With goodwill, doing service. With goodwill, doing what? Service. As to the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Any good thing you do in this world, you receive it. Which also means any bad you do, you receive it. So in doing this service, do it in good way. Unto God. You are not doing unto your unit leader. You are not doing unto the pastor. Do it unto God. And God will reward you for it. Why? God searches the heart and the reins. He knows you are far off. He knows your motive for anything you are doing. He will reward everyone according to the fruit of his doing. Jeremiah 17 verse 10. So whether you are doing good or you are doing bad, God will reward you according to your doing. So ensure right motive. Don't do evil to people in the course of your service. Don't say because now I'm a unit leader, I will show them. No. No. The same person you are showing under the unit tomorrow may be the unit leader. May even be your pastor tomorrow. Be very careful. I told us here on what is that? I think there are three ways God, three major ways God tests human beings. And may we all pass the test. Number one is access to power. If God gives you power, how will you behave? If you can't control yourself with power, then you have a long way to go. Number two is access to sex. If they leave you and somebody will tell will you misbehave. Number three is access to wealth or money. If you have money now, <laughs> some people say, you know a woman when the, money, when the husband doesn't have uh, money. Or no, when the man has money. But you know the man when he has no money. <laughs> he will, if he has money, if he enter your head, but if he has money, go grumble. Please, you must, you must be able to come above all this. Say me, I hear. We are in a journey. But please, let's walk in this journey. Well, have good motive, good way towards people. Your brother buys a car, congratulate him from the heart, not with your grudge. You don't, you don't know what they, they do. You know, guys, somebody is marrying. And you are the one that have been praying together for husband and wife, you know? And the person now got his own before you. You now get God. Why now? And let me bring this person to church. <laughs> huh? <laughs> With goodwill. Goodwill. Goodwill to all men. Goodwill. Hallelujah. Do you know there are many people you can win to God without preaching, but with your goodwill you can win them to God. I want a family to this assembly. The man is a deacon today in our local church. I want him when I was in Okene, just by goodwill. We were in the same compound, that kind of compound that time. Face me and face you. Two, two rooms. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
But I came one day, we are blessed, and I decided to give everybody, child a blessing. That was, without preaching to the man, the following Sunday, he came to church with his wife. Because they came out for the first time, and that's why I knew that they came for the first time. Since that time, they are still members of the church. Show goodwill to people. In your office, show goodwill. Not that you're a Christian. Somebody give you small money to keep. You will say that cockroach enter the bag. <laughs> he said, I had an accident that the money disappeared. You didn't disappear, but the money disappeared. <laughs> I beg you. Number three, you must serve God tirelessly. Serve me, serve God tirelessly. Okay? So, no... Serve God with weariness. Serve God tirelessly. Galatians 6 9. If you not be weary in well doing, in due season you will reap if you faint not. God does not work with those who faint. God does not work with those who look back. Anytime you have opportunity to look back, remember the scripture that says, Remember lost wife. When lost wife looked back, she became a statue. That's a stagnation. God does not walk with those who look back. Luke 6, 9.62. Luke 9, 62. He that puts on his hands on the plow and look at back is not fit or work for the kingdom of God. So you serve God tirelessly. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast or movable, always abiding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Precious people of God, you must be a consistent person. God works with the consistent. One of the features of God you must learn is consistency. God works with consistent people. Anything you are doing with God, be consistent in it. Consistent in your service. Don't be tired. Hallelujah. Because in due season, you will live. There's always due season. May you not miss your due season. What are the returns, the dividends, the benefits for serving God? Number one. It guarantees divine protection. Divine what? How many of us want to be protected here? Divinely. This is one of the great assets you get in the kingdom and in serving God. Divine protection. Divine protection. God becomes your shield and your buckler. God becomes your refuge so that you will not be a refuge on the earth. Thou, O Lord, that is around me, the glory and the lifter of my head. It doesn't matter how many people have risen against you. When God becomes your shield, sir, they can't get you. God becomes your hiding place. When you run in there, you are safe. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 10, verse 1, we saw Jesus send the, 10, uh, the 70 disciples. He appointed them and sent them two by two. And I told us maybe it was Judas and Thomas that they sent together. Who knows? And they went out and came back. From 17 to 19, we saw that they came, they returned with joy because they reported back to Jesus that even the devils were subject to them in his name. Jesus said, relax, don't even rejoice in this one. Rejoice because your name is written in the book of life. For behold, I'll give unto thee power to tread upon serpent and scorpion, verse 19. And over the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Self me protection. I saw the reality of this scripture. 11th of March, 1998, I was posted to Akure and I and the story, I just, somebody planted acid. I don't know how. I don't know what he was looking for, but he can't get me. I drank the acid truly, but nothing happened. That was when I understood the efficacy of this scripture. And Mark 16, 18. God quickened those two scriptures. The Holy Ghost quickened those two scriptures in my mind. And I used it to pray. Nothing happened to my system. I only lost my shirt and my shorts that were here that night. The one that came out from my mind, but the one that entered inside couldn't burn anything inside. Stay with me, protection. You couldn't have known me by now. Or maybe if you have known me, I'll be a fine, fine boy pastor. My mom will be like this. 
Glory to God. Please, serve God, you enjoy protection. Hallelujah. Number two is confer divine honor to you. Divine what? Confers what? There is the honor men give, there is the honor God gives. Please look for the honor that God gives. When God honors you, men will honor you. They may not like your face, but they will honor you. Now hear me. There are people who may not like your face, but they will end up giving to you. Amen. Proverbs 14, 28. In the multitude of men, is a multitude of men is a king's honor. But the one of the people is the destruction of the prince. God, so God rejoices in the multitude of men. So the more you are bringing men to him, you are honoring him. Because First Samuel 2, 30 said, if you honor me, I will honor you. So when you honor God by bringing multitude to him, he will honor you back. John 12, 26, he said, where my father is, there my servant will be. So when you are honoring God, God will honor you. Where he is, you will be there. And it's right now the right hand of God, as he is today we are in this world. So God of heaven will honor you. So go out there, reaching out to so praying kingdom advancement prayers. The same honor that God gives will come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' glorious name. Number three, it secures continuity in the faith. Continuity in the faith. John 15, 2. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth much fruit. Much fruit. When you are productive in the kingdom, God will prune you, purge you, so that you'll be more productive. Some of us will have personal staff, maybe your cook. If your cook gets sick, you know that you do everything within your power to make sure that the, that cook gets well, pick through of us. Why do you do that? So that he can continue doing his work or her work. So please, when you are productive, God will make sure he purges you and prunes you so that you can be what? More productive. But if you are not, he will cut you down. Jesus told the parable in Luke 13, 6 to 9. That a, 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 a man that was keeping fig tree was asked by his boss to cut some because they are not productive. He said, no, give me one more year and I'll put my new. If they don't bring forth in the fourth year, cut it down. You know what that means? Anything you are doing for four years that is not bringing results, check again whether God is there. Hallelujah. And finally, it secures eternity with Christ. If you serve God, you can have eternity with him. Hallelujah. No one here will miss eternity in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. No one here will miss eternity in the name of Jesus. Amen. I command the blessing of the upright to come upon you. Amen. Anyway, there are several causes, cause of God, cause of man, cause of the Satan, cause, self-inflicted causes. If any of those causes are tampering with anyone's destiny here, I plead the mercy of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. If it's the cause of God, you need to repent. You need to be born again. You need obedience to come out of it. If it's the cause of Satan, you need to be in Christ. Because Jesus has redeemed us from the cause of the law. And he, that we can receive the blessing of Abraham. So that through Jesus, the blessing of Abraham can come to us. Now, you need to serve God with joyfulness of heart. If it's self-inflicted cause, you need to repent. You need to surrender yourself to Jesus. Ask God for mercy and then begin to serve God. Because in serving God, as I told us, the blessing comes. And when the blessing comes, causes are put on a reverse. Now hear me, you will never know sorrow again. You will never know shame again. You will never know stagnation again. You will never know chains of slavery again. I command the blessing of the upright to come upon you. I command misfortune to turn to fortune for you. From now the year we go well and end well for you. In Jesus' glorious name. Now before we pray this morning, I want to give opportunity to some people here. You are here this morning. You want the mercy of God. You want Jesus to shine his countenance upon you. The Bible said in Proverbs 18, verse 10, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Your safety 
is in the name of the Lord. And you need to be his own for you to run in there. If nobody gives you a ticket to go there, it's your salvation that will give you a ticket. So you are here today. You want the mercy of God in your life. You want to be born again. You want to be a child of God. Please rise on your feet wherever you are. Rise on your feet wherever you are. I need Jesus in my life. I need the mercy of God in my life. Jesus, change my